Hello everyone. In today's film I'm going to be talking to you about eyebrows, in particular how I draw on my own eyebrows, as well as the tools, the techniques and the products for which that I use to create the kind of brow that I like to have. This is quite a personal film because it is focusing around my own eyebrows and the sorts of styles that I use. Eyebrows, of course, as a subject are hugely ambiguous. A lot of people have eyebrows, a lot of people like to change the shape of their eyebrows, a lot of people like to just leave their eyebrows alone. Some people lose their eyebrows, of course, unfortunately, to things like illnesses. And of course, you have individuals like myself who remove and draw on their eyebrows as an aesthetic choice. Now, the main reason that I remove and draw on my eyebrows is because that my actual eyebrow shape, where the hair grows, the formation of the hair, and the way that it grows and the way that it faces is very downwards. That would, of course, change if I had a slight facelift. I must admit, I also quite like having options. I like to be able to change it. Of course, if you're creating a look where you have quite a strong amount of makeup, it is a lot easier not to have eyebrows and just to draw them on than to have to cover them every day. And because my eyes are quite hooded and my forehead is quite large, I do tend to find that a new shape of eyebrows is a lot more flattering on my own face. Eyebrows, of course, are very important. They're part of the framework of the face. They frame the face. So a good brow makes anyone look fantastic. There isn't one kind of good brow. Everybody suits a different kind of eyebrow. Some people suit an eyebrow that's quite soft and quite thin and it looks fantastic on them. Others suit something that's quite dense and quite full. It also depends, of course, on your own personal preference. Speaking personally as well, I do prefer to go for a much more feminine, softer appearance, something that's more flattering to my features. So I like to go for a brow that is almost unnoticeable. With the kind of eyebrows that I draw on, I like them to be pronounced, but not overly noticeable. They have to just flow with the rest of the face and be balanced amongst the face. I personally don't necessarily like my brows to be a feature unless they are a feature within a look that I'm creating. On a day-to-day -day basis, and even when I wear elaborate makeup, I do tend to go for a similar style of brow each time. The kind of eyebrows for which that I draw on myself, I wouldn't necessarily consider them to be on the thin side of things, but they're definitely not on the thick side of things. I'd say that they're more medium in between. Now, I used to draw on really thick eyebrows, really strong, several years ago, and I loved it. But of course, we all change. Change is a very healthy thing. I also think eyebrows are a process. Most people definitely tend to start with one sort of style. Whether you are somebody that has natural hair, eyebrows and you want to keep your own natural hair, or if you're somebody that draws in a majority of the eyebrow, if you've got quite thin eyebrows or if you have overplucked them, or of course if you're somebody like myself that likes to draw in a new shape. I tend to find that if my eyebrows are too thin, then my forehead just looks absolutely massive and improportionate to the rest of my face. However, if they are too thick, they then make the forehead look too small and my jaw then becomes quite large looking. So the kind of style that I go for does tend to ensure balance throughout the features so that no feature overpowers the other. So the kind of style of eyebrow nowadays that I'm more inclined to go towards is one that is well finished, but not too noticeable, but not too diminutive within the makeup. I like eyebrows to be very neat and cut well on the underneath, but quite frayed and a little feathered on the top. That's what I have found to flatter me personally the most. In recent years, eyebrows have become a feature of their own. So many brands have grown, and there are so many brands that have just been created for the sake of eyebrows alone. It is definitely fascinating to witness this craze for eyebrows. There are three things to acknowledge when it comes to eyebrows. In terms of the eyebrows themselves, shape, style, and color. Eyebrow products do tend to serve best when they are more towards the ashy side of things. Or what I mean by ashy is colors that are slightly more gray. They're not very warm, so they're not very orangey. They're more gray-based. However, I always think it's a great idea. It's the same with contouring or any part of the face where you're adding color of any kind, whether it is simply a gray or a brown, I would always recommend keep a warm tone with you as well as a cool tone so that you can adjust your eyebrows. I certainly find that some of these very ashy colors can look a little bit too ashy on me. Even though my own hair color is quite dark, I definitely think that there has to be the right 
balance. Before I go in and draw on my own eyebrows, I'm going to talk to you about the sorts of products that you can get for eyebrows, as well as the tools that can be used. The market provides an extensive range of eyebrow products today. Some of them are liquid, some of them are gel, some of them are cream, and some of them are cool. Some of them come in a pot, some of them come in a pan, some of them come in pencil format, and some of them also come in a tube. So there are many, many options. I'm just going to mention a few that I use within my kit as well as sometimes on myself. You can use pencils to draw on an eyebrow or fill in your eyebrows. You can use a powder product and a brush and fill in your eyebrows or draw on eyebrows. Of course, you can go in with a gel product or a cream product with a brush and draw in a shape or fill in your own eyebrows or tidy up the shape. Powder eyeshadows also work marvelously. I'm first of all going to speak about pencils and penciling in eyebrows. I personally don't tend to use pencils to draw on eyebrows or to fill in that much. Definitely within my work, I do tend to use a powder product for eyebrows of drawing them on or filling them in. That's what I prefer. I do prefer to work with a brush rather than a pencil. This one is the Anastasia Perfect Brow Pencil, which is absolutely marvelous. And if I just pull the lid off here, you can see there's a little brush here that you can actually blend the product with after you've applied it. So it's very useful for that. Anastasia also do a brow definer, which is one of these swivel pencils, but it is shaped in the shape of a very acute triangle. So it is fantastic for almost sketching in hairs or adding a little bit more definition. And an even finer brow pencil that Anastasia do is the Brow Wiz. And as you can see, if I just swivel that up, it's much more precise than the last two that I showed you. So you can really sketch in individual hairs or draw a very precise line. Anastasia, of course, is renowned for their brow products. They do so many of them and they're all very effective. Another Anastasia product is their Brow Powder Duos. These are fantastic because they have one tone of powder here and another there. So you can really almost customize your eyebrow. These brow powder duos come in many, many shades. So they are applicable for many, many skin tones. Then of course, there's the very famous Anastasia Dip Brow Pomades. These have a swivel lid and you just take it off. These are more of a gel formula. So they apply on like creams, but then they set and they don't go anywhere. These ones are very, very long wearing. And this is Clinique's super fine liner for brows. And it's fantastic as it is one of these swivel pencils. Very, very particular. Working with eyebrows, I do tend to favor powder products more so. I absolutely love this Louise Young eyeshadow palette. Full of powder eyeshadows. You can use this on the eyes. You can use it to contour. You can also use it on the eyebrows. It's absolutely fantastic for eyebrows. So it allows you to customize your eyebrows. And of course, there's an orange right at the top, which is fantastic for warming up the eyebrows. Going in with an orange can be incredibly useful just to mute down any of the ashiness within the eyebrow. Products can sometimes make the eyebrows appear slightly more ashy than they need to be. So by having a bright orange or an orange nearby, it can just amend the shade just ever so slightly. Another group of powder formulations which are great for eyebrows, these shades right here, Inglot's Powder Eyeshadow, the shade 349 and 348, 327 and 329 are also fantastic, as well as 63. With these shades alone, I could probably do eyebrows on every skin tone. I could probably get away with even contouring. I would also keep an orange tone nearby just to warm up any of the shades in case they require it. As some of the very golden, yellowy, very deep skin tones can sometimes require a little bit more warmth than per se somebody with my own skin tone that requires more ashy tones. I am a very fond fan of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega. This color is absolutely fantastic if you have very light skin. It is also fantastic if you are more blonde or ginger it looks great in the eyebrows as it is quite warm. MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Concrete is absolutely fantastic for eyebrows. It is definitely an ashy tone. MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Espresso is fantastic for eyebrows. Now this color is very warm. It looks incredibly warm on me. This can work on many, many skin tones. However, once we move more towards the deeper, deeper skin tones, I'd have to say it's probably a little bit too light. MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Brun is also a fantastic color. I would describe this as being a neutral tone. It's not too ashy. It's not too warm. It can suit many skin tones. I could definitely wear this just on its own for eyebrows and it will look absolutely fine. MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Carbon is a black color, which is very useful for adjusting a shade. If a shade can sometimes be too light or too warm, a little bit of black can give it depth 
and it can also make it slightly more ashy. MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Burnt Orange is also a fantastic colour used as a tone adjuster. So you can adjust the hue and the tone of an eyebrow with an orange if it is looking too ashy. Brow gel is a fantastic way of setting your eyebrows in place and certainly if you have real eyebrows and if you have just filled in the eyebrows and you want to make sure that everything stays in place, going through them with a little bit of brow gel is fantastic. This is MAC Cosmetics Brow Set in the shade Clear. Now do not be alarmed, I have actually added a little bit of brown powder to mine. Just to give it a slight tint, I highly recommend this one. And this is fantastic at just keeping the hairs in a good position. However, if you are somebody that draws on your eyebrows from start to finish, as a method of ensuring additional longevity, you could always go in with a setting spray. I would recommend the Urban Decay All Nighter Pollution Protection Setting Spray. This will create an overall seal of your makeup, ensuring its longevity. MAC Cosmetics also do fantastic range of brow products in pencil formulations and gel formulations. This is MAC Cosmetics Gel Liner in the shade Dip Down, which is quite a deep brown, but used in moderation it could be used on many skin tones from light to dark. So moving on to my own eyebrows, today I'm going to be going in with a concealer. Now I typically use a concealer for my eyebrows because I find that it allows me to manipulate and move the product quite well. Concealer is a fantastic product and it's much more easier to manipulate than a gel. A gel of course will go on smoothly, but if you make any mistakes, it is kind of difficult to amend them because gels set so quickly. So the reason I use concealer is because I can get a great shape. This concealer is actually a fantastic color for eyebrows, particularly my own skin tone. But before I go in and apply any concealer, to the eyebrows or any eyebrow product for that matter, I'm going to go in and set the eyebrow area first of all. And to do so, I am taking some of Cryolan's Loose Translucent Powder in the shade TL3. And I'm just packing that into the brow area. This just removes any moisture because if I go over and draw in with concealer on top of foundation or concealer that hasn't been set, it just starts to slide around. I'm going to be going in with some of Cryolan's Derma Color Cream Concealer. I would describe this color as being quite a gunmetal army green sort of color. It's absolutely fantastic because the color is perfect for my skin tone, my undertone, and against my hair colour, of course. And the Dermacolor Cream Concealers are not actually that emollient. They aren't like a typical concealer that's quite creamy. They're quite dry and a bit stiff to work with. I typically use a MAC 263 because its fibres are synthetic. Now with cream products, I do tend to favour synthetic brushes. A very similar brush in natural fibres is the Space NK Liner Brush, which is also fantastic. Now I like a brush that has quite a thin line. So when you draw with it, it creates quite a fine line by only applying a little bit of pressure. And I just load up the brush, just almost flatten it from side to side so that the brush saturates with the product. And by pushing the brush from side to side, it flattens the brush back into a sharper shape. And what I do first of all, I always start on the right, I don't know why, and I just draw in a shape as to where I want it. This colour will appear quite dark to begin with but I'm only using this as our stencil, first of all. And I just pull it out to about there. I tend to follow the eye's natural shape. So from the beginning of the eye, I imagine a little line that goes up like that. I begin slightly after it, not right on the mark, and I don't make them absolutely symmetrical there because my nose is actually not symmetrical, it's slightly to one side. So if I make the eyebrows absolutely symmetrical to the eyes, it makes the nose sometimes look a bit disproportionate and it can sometimes make the eyebrows look slightly unsymmetrical. So I adjust it to suit and I just kind of flick the colour upwards just to give the eyebrow more body. Then I take these micro cotton buds, some people call them q-tips. These ones are by Muji and they're very very small and if there's any little mistakes what I do is I almost roll it slightly against the mistake just taking off the product. I don't rub away at it, I just sort of roll it up and out. You can actually rest your hand or your elbow on a table when drawing on or filling in your eyebrows because making them as symmetrical as possible requires quite a bit of concentration. And what I start to do is I just pull the product upward first of all, almost smudging it upwards. Then I do tiny little strokes like that. 
So I can actually get away with using this D40 color on its own. And I sometimes do stronger in certain areas so it doesn't all look so immaculately perfect. I like the underneath of the eyebrow to be very pristine and symmetrical, but the rest of the eyebrows, I like them to be a little bit feathered and frayed. Then I start to cut it across and pulling it down now. And I always keep it within our triangles. So from the side of the iris, the side of the eye, and the beginning of the eye. It can look quite straight at this point, that's because I'm relaxed, but when I speak and move around, my eyebrows do tend to move upward and my face sort of moves. So when I am in movement, they don't look so straight, and I am aware of that. So I always do them a little bit straight to begin with, because when I speak and express and carry on with my day, they do end up looking right in the face. At this point, it doesn't really matter because this is only my stencil. A fantastic way of getting eyebrows to be symmetrical is to take your brush flat. You can check if the fronts align with one another. You can also move it higher to check if the arches are on the same level. This one is considerably lower than this one, so we're going to make this one higher. This may look slightly silly, but if you face down, you will be able to see a triangle of skin tone forms when you place the brush like that. If the triangles appear to be similar, and if the eyebrows above them appear to be similar and looking the same on either side, this allows you to see if the eyebrows are looking the same on either side, and if the triangles of flesh tone are the same on either side, and the eyebrows on either side line up, then you have achieved a symmetrical eyebrow. Working at the inner part of the eyebrow, I actually take the brush and flip it round. So instead of flicking it outward, I'm flicking it inward. And from about midway in, I pull it the other way, just ever so slightly, and just very small little flicky motions. So I'm almost creating a smudged effect. Now at this point, the eyebrows are looking a little bit wonky donkey. So we're going to go in and correct any of the asymmetry and the mess. Today, I shall be going in with some of MAC Cosmetics Full Coverage Foundation in the shade W10. And if I were to make a recommendation of concealer brushes that are marvellous for cutting in or creating very precise concealer work, the Anastasia A1 brush is marvellous as a square tipped brush. It allows you to work with great precision. And this brush right here, which is a trusted favourite of mine, is the Charles Fox 8146405 brush. But today I'm going to be going in with my Anastasia A1 brush. But before I go in with any concealer, instead of going over product with more product, I actually like to go in with my little Q-tip and remove any of the product that might be uneven. And always look at your brows from afar. Also look at them when you're talking and do sort of funny faces. That will give you an idea of how the brow moves and how it looks. I also like to make sure that just this area here is balanced. You know, it can't be too thick or too thin. I find this method actually really easy and really quick. I'm now going to go in with a little bit of our concealer and start to cut an edge. And what I'm doing is just cutting in. So you place it and pull it down. This allows you to clean up any of the mistakes that you've made with your eyebrows. And then I'm just blending it down. So I'm pulling the brush downwards and just very softly pulling the concealer into what we have applied earlier. This will ensure seamlessness. And as you will be able to see, that just sharpens up and neatens up the eyebrow substantially. So you still have the neatness underneath, but on the top, it's frayed, so it appears slightly more natural. So as you can see, the concealer just neatens up the eyebrows. I've always thought this was a really sneaky way of perfecting an eyebrow. I actually used to consider this cheating. So I'm now going to go in with a warm tone, and today I'm going to be taking a trusted favourite of mine, MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega. And I'm going to apply this to the brows on an Anastasia 7B brush. And by working with a cream product underneath and a powder product on top, cream products tend to be reflective, Powder products, particularly if they are a matte powder formula, tend to be light absorbent. The cream concealer reflects light, whereas the powder eyeshadow absorbs it. By having a combination of product that absorbs and deflects light, it creates more dimension to the eyebrow. It creates the illusion of having 3D texture, which assists the illusion of having natural eyebrows. And as you can see, the Omega doesn't really have that great a presence. I just like to feather it here, just so that it looks a little bit softer. And you can always go back in with your concealer brush and what remains on it and just sort of 
buff that over the front of the eyebrow just to soften it. If I'm to look straight ahead, you, you will be able to see that my right eyebrow, where I have just gone in and applied some of the Omega color, is looking more consistent with the rest of my characteristics, whereas the left eyebrow, yet to have Omega applied to it, it seems a little bit harsh because it is more on the color side of things, but by adding the warmth to it just brings balance. Also using a spoolie can be fantastic for just scuffing the edge just to soften everything. So that more or less completes the look. It may seem quite complex, but it is actually relatively easy to draw on this style of eyebrow. The steps are relatively simple, it's easy, it doesn't take that long to do, and it definitely suits the rest of my face. I definitely think with eyebrows, it is a very personal thing. And I also think that the more that you try out different products, the more that you try out different shapes, whether you draw on your eyebrows or you're simply filling in your own eyebrows, you become more aware of the kind of eyebrows that are best suited to you and the kind of products that you are best suited to work with. Trial and error and certainly practice makes perfect. Of course, I'm not wearing that much makeup on my skin, on my cheeks, on my lips or on my eyes. But today I went for quite a strong eyebrow, slightly thicker than I normally would, to demonstrate to you the techniques that I use to creating this kind of brow. I have had a tremendous amount of fun creating this film for you here today, and I hope that you have found the tips, the techniques, and the recommendations for which that I have made within today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful, or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and of course, take care. Bye.